I've been referred by my colleague uh, Vijaya in Gurgaon. Uh, he connected okay. with me my uh, introductory session. I would like my video to be off at this point. Indranil, I just okay. hope you understand. I will be on mute also. In case I need to intervene, I would uh, unmute myself to make it more clearer on the Zoom call. Okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so good evening, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to have you all here. And, um, and it's my pleasure to introduce you all uh, to Indro Neil, um, who is a professional of uh, 37 years in flower remedies. And I'm Smita. I'm an HR by profession. And um, I have a certain... Um, uh, I, I'm an avid traveler, a reader, and uh, I love occult sciences. And uh, I happened to meet uh, Indro Neil uh, in my search uh, to know my destiny, to know more about um, what am I good at. And um, uh, he is a very um, veteran batch flower therapist and of, uh, with a lot of experience in um, uh, understanding Smitha, people. let me let me let me let me in, intrude i'm essentially a human alchemist and a transformational coach bachelor therapy came to me much later so if you're introducing me let's set the expectations right with the audience that bachelor therapy is just one of the means of bringing about transformation in lives of people but essentially i'm here as a transformational enabler. I hope that that's clear, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Indonil is a transformational uh, coach and a human alchemist. And um, today we are here to know more about uh, uh, what is uh, the secret behind manifesting destiny. Um, uh, so, Indranil, I have certain uh, questions. I'm really intrigued by your ways, your means to um, guide people. And, you know, uh, when we are young, we have certain dreams. And when we grow up, you know, uh, into the rat race, uh, we take up very conventional professions. And deep down, we have this feeling. Is this what I was really born for? And we tend to have these thoughts. Um, how do I find out what I'm meant to do? So can you guide us here? Bye. Thank you. Thank you for leading me into this, uh, Smitha. And from my side, welcome to all of you. There were more people who were supposed to join. But the fact that they have not joined shows the fact that while we are all fascinated about manifesting the destiny, but I'm not so sure how many of us are so serious about it. We read inspirational story about people who have moved out of the rut and created wealth, wisdom and well-being for themselves and we become fans. And the very fact that we become fans means that we see ourselves in them. But when it comes to doing, we kind of prefer to be in our comfort zones and keep cribbing about life the way it is. I'm, I'm a very outspoken person and that's how I've been for so many years, 20 years of journey, 10,000 lives touched as a human alchemist. In fact, my journey started with helping 12 people to discover their destiny. And all of them are most importantly, whether they are rich and famous or not, that's not important. They're all living a life of joy and peace. So now coming to uh, Smitha's question, everything has a reason. Nothing happens for no reason. So if people are made to fall into rut, and this is happening over ages, over generations, we, we can't talk about any particular year. We are still doing it with our children. We may be a little more liberal than what our parents were, but Touch your heart. Are we not imposing 
our understanding of what they must be doing to survive rather than what they are meant for to thrive. How many of you have seriously thought about helping your children to discover that unique awesomeness that they carry? Believe you me, in this world, if there are 7 billion people, population, there are 7 billion species of being human because all of us are uniquely awesome. That's how we are engineered. That's how we are built. But the world order is very different. The world order wants us to be uh, uh, more rounded. You, you can't have edges, right? You can't be unique. If you are unique, uh, the authority cannot manage you. Your manager will not be able to manage you. You, you, you need to be in a mold. You need to be in a shape. And when I say authority, parents are the first authority. The schools won't be able to manage. And that's why they have set curriculum. The college will not be able to manage. That's why. So everything has a reason. And there is a more fundamental reason. What is the fundamental reason? The fundamental reason, as I have understood, in journeying with people and helping them to move from the vicious world to the virtuous world, from the world of survival to the world of evolution and transformation is unless you have gone astray, how can you find the way? Unless you have gone astray, how can you find the way? I don't know how many of you have watched this movie called Kung Fu Panda. I'm sure it's been a very popular movie. And right at the beginning, Panda, Ho, oh, comes and tells his father, I had a dream and the father says, oh, it must be the noodle dream. I says, oh, come on, it's just another stupid dream. And he dreamt of being the warrior king. So many of us have been conditioned to dismiss our dreams as stupid dreams. But the dreams don't die. Dreams chase us if we don't chase the dream. Touch your hearts in difficult times, in times like now, in disruptive times. Haven't you so many times thought, I wish I had pursued my dream rather than doing this? What's the point of taking up a job which seems to be secure but is not at all secure? What's the point of doing a business which began with my passion? But now it seems I'm only managing profit and loss, the PL and the balance sheet. My passion has gone for a toss. What's the point of being in a profession where I still have to be in the rat race and I'm not allowed to be different? Because if I am different, I won't get clients. You see what I'm saying? So yes. that, that, that's how it is. And then comes a time, and the, hear me out very clearly. This has happened in my life. This has happened in lives of thousand other people who I've helped. I've, I've waited for them to come to this point. There comes a point of inflection. There comes a time when for me, it took me 16 years because I had no Indranil to guide me. You have Indranil to guide you, so you don't need to wait for so long. There comes a point in time when you are in your orbit and then you experience a push from inside. A, a, a tremendous push. I cannot stay here anymore, even one moment. And along with that, simultaneously, you experience a tremendous pull from somewhere, some other orbit outside you. When this happens, you know you're ready for manifesting your journey. Rider, you don't need to wait for it. This is the systemic way of getting you out of the rut, of getting you out of your survival mode and bringing you to the transformational mode from your vicious 
world to the virtuous world. However, if you are aware, if you are conscious, if you really want to make it in life, if you really want to be joyous, abundant, purposeful, meaningful in your journey, you will deliberately take the first step to find out what is your destiny all about. And mind you, your dream is nothing but a microcosm of your dream, of your destiny. Your dream holds the vision to the destiny. And that's where the journey starts from. Yes, Mita, did I answer your question? Yes, but you know, uh, somewhere in these journey of dreams, we all tend to take shortcuts. We all want overnight success. We all want, uh, you know, uh, abundance just in a jiffy doing nothing. And uh, uh, they go to healers, therapists to understand where their blocks are. You think, has it worked? And if it hasn't, then how do you think you can make it work? Yeah, so it's another very uh, interesting question. In times like now, you will notice many webinars going on. You will notice many promotions, many ads, people promising, manifesting abundance, manifesting a job, manifesting a relationship, so many things. So this is not just now, this has been there for many, many years. Uh, I know a friend of mine who uh, came with a lot of promise and he used to run a program and I think he still runs a program which is to do with manifesting money very clearly. So sometime around the end of last year, I became curious. And since I have uh, a very big group of people whose lives I have touched, whose paths I have crossed, I thought, let me do a survey. Let me find out, does it really work? The same question, Smitha, that you had, I also had. And I was shocked to know that seven out of 10 people said, no, it did not work. Seven out of 10 people said it did not work. Two out of them said they were not very sure whether the intervention worked or not. And one out of 10 said it worked. So there is a reason. There's nothing wrong with the practitioner or the practice. But let's understand the mechanism of manifestation. If we understand the mechanism of manifestation, you will know why so often it does not work. Imagine yourself to be a vessel. And the vessel is kept outside and it is pouring abundance, incessantly pouring abundance, incessantly pouring wealth, wisdom, well-being. For your vessel to be filled, there are three conditions. Number one, it needs to be open. So the lid has to be open. Right? Number two, it has to be receptive. There needs to be space inside for it to receive the downpour of abundance. And number three, which is very important, it should be a proper vessel which does not break away or melt away. It should not be one of those. Uh, you know, temporary, uh, let's say, paper cups. So the analogy is, now let me bring in the parallel with our lives. Being open and receptive means we have been able to remove 
all the unconscious and the subconscious blocks that we have to manifestation. Okay, let me, out there, those who are in the audience, let me declare that tomorrow you will go to work, tomorrow is Sunday, so Monday you will go to work and you will get to know that you have got a 50% salary hike. What happens to you inside? Disbelief, first block. No, no, I can't be getting that. I'm not worth it. Second block. Am I capable of getting a 50% salary hike? Incapable. Powerlessness. The third block. Oh my God, if I get that salary hike, what will people around me and my peers say? Guilt. Another block. How will I be able to manage this? because my responsibilities would increase accordingly. Doubt with respect to responsibilities. I will be looked upon as a different person and I will be shunned away from my group. But you see, in my unconscious, I'm so programmed with my smallness, with my limit limitedness my limiting beliefs are so strong that while intellectually i would like to manifest i would like to manifest wealth i would like to manifest wisdom i would like to manifest well-being i would like to manifest the universe and trust you me there is every reason that you would not just like but want and intend to because all of us are a microcosm of the universe. Whatever the universe has belongs to me. But I am the one who is blocking it. My age-old conditionings, my sponsoring thoughts, my limiting beliefs. And in most of these practices, these limiting beliefs are not entirely dissolved. They are partially dissolved, they are temporarily dissolved, but they are not entirely dissolved. So that blocks the openness, that also blocks the receptivity. The third thing is, who will receive it? Mr. So-and-so with that title or designation, with staying in that address so-and-so, son of so-and-so, that's not who you are. That's what you have become. You need to know who you are. And you need to reclaim the awesome you having discovered yourself. That is the robustness of the vessel in which the manifestation will pour in. So three conditions. Unblock empty discovery and all of them need to be complete if that is complete my friend nothing else needs to be done because as I, as I said it is raining abundance all the time every time everywhere so if it's raining abundance then uh, can you give us some case studies like you know how some of the possible um, like how, how your uh, some of your clients may have had some blocks that way of manifesting destiny like can you give us some uh, case studies of your clients oh there are many case studies in fact as i said i started my journey uh, way back in year 2000 with 12 case studies and then i continued refining my approach so my approach is very simple uh, i don't want to go into any particular case study but what you are going through smitha for example is one way and that's a refinement of the way that i have been pursuing 
but the fundamental principle is the first step is to create an intent the first step is making sure that i am not complacent about manifesting abundance just because i am a rightful heir of the abundance the second step having made the intent i help people to become aware of their conditionings and the limiting beliefs i help my clients to go deeper and deeper and that's a very very intense process and then there are ways and means by which each of these conditioning one at a time it dissolve it, it it takes it takes time dissolving that takes time there are different methods that i use i use the method of release i use the method of consciousness or awareness meditation is a great tool but there is a special kind of meditation i use which is called presencing and currently i am using batch flower therapy to dissolve and of all these i find batch flower the simplest the gentlest and yet the surest the most deepest i would say intervention and yet you won't even know how the blocks melt away like the snow melts in sunshine and once that happens the third stage is personal discovery and i can talk about that in detail but i think that answers the question that you have asked us now right yes uh, so this is a very beautiful metaphor snow melts uh, in sunshine so can you uh, tell us about um, you know how to discover this true self you know how to uh, when the snow starts melting in the sunshine does it uh, does it manifest or is it possible to manifest to destiny at that point of time and what is your advice to manifest it yeah so before that uh, smita i i just need to share with all of you that uh, in another uh, maybe 7 minutes or so we'll take a short break 5 minutes break for all of us because i know the session is intense and then we'll come back in 5 and please don't go you stay there we'll take a 5 minutes break and come back i will let you know when we are taking a break so after having removed the blocks as i said the uh the process that the client undergoes is called personal discovery and the essence of this process is discovering that unique dna around which you are essentially carved you see there is a persona that you which you think you are that you which is your self concept is a certain framework of you which you have made for the world to know you in a certain way but that's limited that has definite us and that limited being is not the right vessel abundance will not pour into it it will melt away it will break away it doesn't have the strength to withhold abundance the real you is the essential you around which is built the awesome virtuous self of yours a glimpse or a few of them you would have got when you were not so conditioned in your childhood when without any guidance you would have played the keyboard without any guidance you would have gone into nature and made a sketch of the landscape without any gui- guidance you would have danced sung orated what not and people would have been surprised my god for example without any guidance i know from a very early age my son used to write so well the only difference between me and many fathers is i knew that somewhere light the dna over there and it took us some time for me 
to make him agree. Just listen to this. So strong were his limiting beliefs that he could not believe that he can get into the media world. Also, the peer pressure of his friends in the school. And at the same time, he didn't like science. So I said, the good thing is to take him through a process of personal discovery. And he would himself know, because it's a very scientific process. It's not an approximate, it's not a subjective process. It's a data-driven process. And most importantly, once a person goes through that, it is tremendously energizing and motivating. And the person wants to take up that life which the discovery shows. So maybe I'll share more about the discovery after a short break as to how we go about doing the discovery. After a short break of five minutes, please stay back. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back in five. Thank you so much.